guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Abby and today I feel a lot like crocheting while sort of talking about things. If you like this segment, I definitely will continue it. I might just continue it anyway because I absolutely love to crochet. So the way that I actually start crocheting is I find a reference picture or something that I want to crochet. Sometimes I don't even start with reference picture. I have to draw the reference picture. But this time, I actually have a reference picture and it comes from this lovely book here. This is The Legend of Zelda Arts and Artifacts book that I got as a present from my sister's husband. I like to flip through this sometimes just to find inspiration and as you can see, from my top one right here. I really felt like doing Deku Link or Deku Link. I don't know. People pronounce that differently. I say Deku. Typically from that I don't do what I'm about to show you. I thought it'd be easier for you to see how I visualize things. So this is typically what I do in my head which has <laughs> each bit of Link that I'm going to be doing is its own separate piece and this is kind of how I break down my crocheteables into pieces. I also don't know about the audio in here. We have really loud air conditioning so I apologize for that. I don't have a fancy microphone just like I don't have a tripod right now. You are standing on a ton of boxes and uh, quite frankly I wouldn't be surprised if my cat comes in here and knocks you over. Completing this is going to take 43 separate pieces. I like to write my own patterns. I don't follow patterns anymore. I write them so that I will remember them later if I perhaps want to do something again. So we're going to start with the head. I want my Deku Link to be about four inches, three or four inches tall. Um, and so I'm using a 2.10 millimeter hook. I don't know if you will even be able to see that, but that is how big the hook is. And because of that, I do something a little bit odd. I tend to cut the yarn like this into segments and then pull it apart. So I only have two strands at once. And then I use those strands to crochet with. My cat is now suddenly very interested in what's happening. So crocheting with cats is definitely more difficult. <laughs> okay, down you go. I promised that I would talk while doing this, and I plan on doing that, so we definitely are gonna have a conversation. I started crocheting about 10-ish years ago because I needed a project that was supposed to be some sort of homemaking skill I could possibly use in the future. I found this book in a bookstore. I think it's called Tiny Yarn Animals. I still have it somewhere, so maybe I'll find it one of these days and show you. But yeah, it was called Tiny Yarn Animals, and I really liked the way that the animals looked, and I thought it was so cute that you could make toys, basically out of yarn. I asked my mom if I could get it. She said yes. So I bought it and I brought it home. I tried really hard to learn from the book because it had pictures of how to do stuff. I didn't really have a lot of internet access that one would have probably today. And so I couldn't just go look up videos on how to crochet. So I was really worried. I couldn't figure it out from the book. And I was really upset because I really wanted to make the animals that were in it. And then I found somebody who I had known for a little while who knew how to crochet and they showed me how to start. And once she got me started with the whole process, I followed the directions and the very first thing I ever crocheted was a lion. And it looked absolutely terrible. Not for the fault of the book, it was just, you know, when you start something brand new, you are not going to be good at it. It's kind of a fact. The lion didn't have a tail, 
and I really wanted it to have a tail because then it would look more anatomically correct, I guess. So I tried to come up with my own pattern for the tail, but it looked terrible. If I do more of these, I might make things bigger than I typically would because this is about the size that I typically do when I'm crocheting and that's just because I think smaller things tend to look cleaner than bigger crocheting projects. The first things that I ever made were really big and bulky and they looked absolutely terrible. If I can find them, I definitely will bring them out and show them to you at some point. They're probably in my parents' house. I'm not completely embarrassed to buy them. I mean, I kind of am because they're they're terrible, but you got to start somewhere and it's just kind of a testament to me that a craft takes time to learn. And there is no way that you can just, you know, start something and be amazing at it the second that you start at least in the art world that is very rare and I would consider this an art so the way that I crochet is kind of probably different from other people that you may see and I don't know if that's just the way I learned it was wrong or um, or something but I do not crochet I think the way that a lot of other people do and because of that, I typically have to turn my stuff inside out instead of just having it, you know, being normal. <laughs> I'm trying to show you, like I'm trying to hold it so that you'll see it because that's what I'm doing this video for, I think. It's gonna be really hard to show this because it's kind of small, but I will attempt to show you while I'm crocheting. Anyway, because I've been doing this for so long, People know about it, most of my friends know about it, sometimes classmates know about it. I really have a hard time, I don't know if other people are like this, no I'm just kidding, I know a lot of people like this. I don't know if you have ever felt this way, but I have such a hard time paying attention to like, mainly just class. <laughs> I have a really hard time paying attention in class if I'm not doing something with my hands whether that be doodling or playing with something in my hand like a smooth rock, like feeling that. And crocheting is one thing that really has helped me with that. Sometimes when I would crochet during class, I mean, okay, to illustrate a little bit of what I mean when I say that I absolutely had a rough time paying attention in class, my first experience with the school system actually was in private school and since I didn't really have a whole lot of experience with being in school it was hard for me to sit for hours at a time and listen to someone lecture or to just sit there and do like private reading or you know that kind of thing work on assignments so Sometimes I would do this thing where I would take my pink pearl eraser, you know those, and I would rub it so that all of the little pieces of eraser would fall off and kind of be a little bit gummy. And then I would roll that into a ball and sort of make, it's not like clay, but it is a squishy consistency eraser. So it's kind of like a kneadable eraser, but with eraser bits and not with an actual kneadable eraser. <laughs> so one time I was doing that and I was minding my own business, doing my own personal reading and some kid sitting next to me, and I don't know if I can blame them but I kind of have wondered through the years why they cared about anything that I was doing in my own personal desk because it wasn't on top of my desk, it was like in the space it was one of those desks with like the shelf and so I was doing it in the shelf not bothering anybody next thing I know the teachers coming over to my desk and is asking me if clay helps me think or whatever <laughs> And I'm like first of all it's not clay 
second of all, I guess, I think she said something along the lines of, well, I'm glad that you know what helps you think, but you can't do things like that in the classroom. Or whatever. This is fifth grade, by the way. So I don't really understand why it was so strict according to, like, that kind of thing. But that happened. And it was really awkward because I, being, like, pretty new to school, I didn't want to tell a teacher anything. Like, I only spoke when spoken to. I didn't want to have to be argumentative with them. I have a ton of stories about, like, me being super antisocial in the fifth grade. Another separate occasion that happened way years later, this happened last year actually, I was in the middle of a commission that I was doing, making a BB-8, and I was sitting in the absolute back of the classroom when my teacher, who I absolutely really, really loved as a teacher, he was such a good teacher, very, very good teacher, so he stops class and it's just like are you making a BB-8 back there and it was so embarrassing at least for me it was a little embarrassing and I was like yeah and he told me to hold it up for the entire class and I was just like I can't yet it's not done but when it's done I'll show you and you know the class all laughed and then some of them came to see what I was doing. After I finished the BB-8, I did go back and I showed it to him and he took a picture of it. And I'm kind of really upset that I don't have that BB-8 anymore. Actually, it's kind of a long story and I could get into it. I've learned so many lessons from doing commissions and also patterns and everything. I have had bad experiences with giving people things as a commission and then like giving it to them before getting payment and then never getting paid and I absolutely hate that it's happened I think twice to me and I didn't think it was gonna happen the second time because I thought the person was more reputable turns out no they are less reputable and it was a terrible terrible situation guy ended up blocking me and not only me on like every single platform that I was friends with him on but also our mutual friends he never got around to wanting to pay me for it and that was almost a year ago and so it was really frustrating to have that happen. So honestly this project took way longer than I thought it was going to. I initially was going into it hoping it would be around four hours, but I think in total it took maybe double or triple that. Which is just a lot of work for something so small, but it is about the size that I wanted it. As you can see, I have changed outfits and that is just because it took so long. It's not that long for you, but it's been three days of work for me. <laughs> But overall, I'm really happy with it, and I hope you liked how it turned out too. If this at all interested you, I am considering doing this as sort of a segment and doing it more often. If that sounds cool, then you should subscribe. And also give me more suggestions for what I can make next time. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys later. give you a middle name so when I'm really mad at you I can call you by it. He just attacked my leg and now he's biting me. Yeah that makes up for it. Don't you bite my face! So I'm trying to film myself just crocheting and getting everything together but you want to be my cameraman? Come on.